Hey y'all, I'm getting ready to work on the table that my husband and I are working on. It's been a lot of his work before my work up to now. But today he's got it sanded and ready and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the wood, a little bit about what's going on, and then we're gonna put the wood conditioner on. Then we're gonna stain this baby. But right now, I first wanna talk about the wood. He got this at Lowe's, which is our local lumber yard. So whatever your local lumber yard is. But I wanted to show you a little bit about the numbers here. Uh, most all of your wood from the lumber yards are gonna have numbers on it. This KD means kiln dried, and then you'll look for a number afterwards. Um, ideally, once it's in your house, we are gonna want a six, two, and eight, because that's a percentage. This was dried to 19%, so there's 19% moisture still in here. Ideally, we would have had a 12%, but 19 is what we had available. This outdoor shop and in Louisiana, even though it's humid, it's very hot outside. So it's gonna continue to dry some, but it's not gonna shrink the way that it would if it was straight off of a sawmill. We do have a sawmill and I know you've seen some of the videos and things from that before, but you know, if you have a guy down the road that has um, rough cut boards and things like that, you may think, oh, I can get those cheaper. It'll already look rustic. That would be fantastic for the farmhouse look. Ink, not, not if it's gonna be inside and not if you're wanting to make something nice with it. Because what happens with that uh, wood that's not been kiln dried is it's gonna shrink and dry when it's in your house and becomes acclimated because your air conditioner is gonna continue to draw moisture out, it, out of it and things like that. And it'll warp and twist and bow and bend and pull apart, pull the screws or the nails out, whatever uh, biscuits or whatever you've put it together with and you'll end up having put a whole lot of time and effort into something that's not going to be as beautiful as you want not going to be something you want your name on in the end so even though we have you know a booty load of lumber here that he got off the sawmill when we're making something like this that's going to go inside someone's house we're going to make it with store-bought lumber or we're going to have the lumber kiln dried first so like I said, just look for these numbers. KD means kiln dried. This one is at a 19%. Your ideally would be six to eight for something indoor. 12 is, you know, generally what you're gonna be finding. And this is uh, yellow pine. So uh, this is a tuba 12, which is a very sturdy, you know, piece of wood, which is great for um, a farmhouse tabletop. One other thing, Eric, can you put right here? These are holes that he has put in for, I guess, the screws that hold it to the mountain thing underneath. What he's gonna do, these are dowels. We use dowels for all kinds of things in, in the craft world. But you would drill your hole out, put your dowel in, cut it off flush with the surface, and boom, you're, you've got a filled up wood area again. There's a lot of uh, knots and things in this particular wood. If it was up to him, he likes things just perfect. He would fill it with this stainable wood filler, sand it off flat, and you know it would still stain like usual and look prettier. I want it to look more rustic, so we're gonna leave that alone, but he will fill those holes later on with these dowels. The boards themselves are put together with what's called a biscuit joiner, which we have the tool for that here, but we're not, we'll do another video if y'all are interested on that another day. But this is a biscuit, not this kind of biscuit, but this kind of biscuit. And this piece of equipment cuts a hole that's gonna be the size of this and the shape of this in between the two boards and you will put the biscuit in and it glues it in and then it holds it together so this actually becomes part of the actual surface of the wood. So this is all biscuited together and not screwed or nailed or something that's gonna come apart later on. The wood glue has wood fibers and things in it and when you mix that with a biscuit and you put it in that correctly shaped hole there, it's gonna make it more solid and, and hardier than if it had been a whole board. So we're very thrilled with that. One thing that you wanna do, I'm gonna use his um, air compressor hose here to blow off the excess sawdust and things that are on here. 
these, these boards look like this when you get them, which is kind of moldy and dirty looking. And then you sand them to get them all white and pretty like this. But in the sanding process, even if you've wiped this off with a rag, there's still going to be some residue on there. So you could do this with canned air, just the kind you get to clean your keyboards with. Or if you got one of these handy dandy things in your husband's shop or in your shop, just go for it. So get really close and good in something moving in there you can I'm not sure if you'll be able to see any of the dust flying here but we want to get really good stick to this and then have lumpies and bumpies all over the top of our food. You need to trademark the lumpies and dumpies. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Get that last little area down there because we don't want to blow this again later and then blow this back so that can get Normally when you're sanding, you a wood conditioner. Um, but when you're doing a soft wood like a pine, um, what are some of the hardwoods are things like cherry and walnut and oak and the really figured woods that you work with and they take a stain better than a soft wood like a pine or I don't know if you would stain something like a cedar but anyway the softer kind of woods but we're gonna put a wood conditioner on this because if you've ever uh, seen one that has splotches like it didn't take stain good in this whole area then it looks real good over here then there's a splotchy area there that would need to do have been conditioned first i ordered this on amazon i can put you a link for it if you want it this is a uh, verithane wood conditioner pre-stain and this is for used with use with oil-based stains i've already loosened the top of this and i just have a couple of uh chip brushes here and I cut up a t-shirt to get some lint-free rags. So the instructions on here say to brush it on or put it on with the lint-free cloth and to go against the grain when you're applying. So I'm going to do just this end piece here to begin with. And what this is going to do is sort of seal some of the uh, crevices that are the, in the wood grain here so that it will take the stain evenly and not leave those splotches. So it said to put it on against the grain. So this is your grain running this way. So here I am putting this on and it said don't let it dry. And it's hot out here so it's going to dry fast. Then it said to wipe it back off with the grain. So here we're gonna go with the grain. There is a little bit of smell to this, a little bit of a chemical smell, but um, you know, uh, Eric's put a lot of effort into this and, and I know that it's gonna be a beautiful piece and I, so I want the stain to look good too. I'm gonna use the Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain, which is an oil-based stain. So that's why I chose this um, well, that, that in the reviews, because then I'm like, which? Against the grain, against, against the grain. Oh, there you go. That's, I need my reminder there. Wanting to go with the grain, because when you're staining, you're going to go with the grain. So here, to make sure that it gets good and sort of scrubbed into those areas, I need to be reminded <laughs> to go against the grain. That's what I'm here for. That's what he's here for. The stain that we're going to put on here is very dark. It's uh, espresso. And then we're going to paint the legs and the rest of the body in 
fluff, a Dixie Belle color, which is basically a white. Okay, we'll do the same thing now with the grain. And whenever I was trying to decide, I think that's what I was talking about, trying to decide which product to use, I just went on, you know, trusty old Amazon and read reviews from other people. And this product had the best reviews of anyone I saw. And so I ordered it. And rather than just going to Lowe's or Sherwin-Williams, which is where you know I go for a lot of times for this type of product, which I could have went there and would have trusted everything they said, so that's another option if you want to definitely continue to shop in your local hometown. But the reviews were good on this and that's what I decided to go with. Also, normally would use a good, you know, one of my paint pixie brushes or something like that. But because I had never used this product before, I was really uncertain about whether it would ruin my brush. You know, who wants to ruin a $30 brush? On a new product, so. I decided to get out the old chip brushes and I buy these well, this one has a decoration on it, as I was at one point going to decorate it. But I buy these in, like, the case of this size. I think it's a case of, I don't know how many, 24 or something like that for $7 at Harbor Freight. There. And you don't have to feel guilty about losing your brush. Okay, so that's it. We're going to continue to do the rest of this piece. Eric's going to help me because my arms aren't quite long enough to reach all the way across the thing. And this only has to dry 30 minutes before we stain. We may stain today, and if so, we'll come back and share that with you. Thanks.